What is going on guys, Phil here from Phil's Craft Corner. Hope you're all having a great day. I'm doing pretty good because I've been sent a box. This box. I've already opened this box to check the contents, but this is my very first paid review of a product. I was contacted by a company and they wanted me to review this product. You've probably seen what it is in the title already. So let's open this box. Let's see what the package is like and uh, I'll take you through what's inside. All right, so this is the box it came in. All I did was open this package to make sure the inside package wasn't damaged, and then I can unbox the whole thing for you guys. So this is exactly as it came packaged. A little bit of paper in the top, and the wireless air compressor is in that box. It does have a battery warning label on, which is kind of a legal requirement for shipping anything with a battery in it, just as a warning. So this is the Senkzini Tire Inflator Cordless Rechargeable 6000 milliamp hour Battery Motorcycle Tire Inflator 150 PSI Car Pump Electric Bike Pump Handheld Mini Air Pump Compressor Auto Off for Car Motorcycle Bicycle and Balls That's a long title <laughs> So yeah, this is the Synxy wireless air compressor. This is similar to the Osram mini air compressor, which I did a video review on just up here. Um, it looks similar. Uh, the features seem to be similar from what I've read in the Amazon description. So this is a portable air compressor that's designed to pump up car tires, bike tires, motorbike tires, scooter tires, uh, footballs, basically anything that you can fit the nozzle onto and inflate, that's what it'll do. Let's see what we get in the box, shall we? You open the box, the first thing you see is an instruction manual. This is a UK instruction manual and there's quite a lot in there. I think it's in different languages. There you go, English, Dutch, French, Italian, and Spanish. So this tells you what your LEDs do. Uh, so that button's click LED, press twice for SOS, press three times for a flash. Uh, switch the inflation mode, pressure up and down. Instructions for use, I'll have a quick look at that over in a minute. Uh, Multi-purpose nozzles, so you can put different nozzles on different types of valves. Schrader valves, Dunlop valves and the Prister valves. Uh, and then it just goes into a different language. So it seems fairly basic to how to use it. You get a nice little pouch, a little velvety pouch for your drawstring, that's pretty cool. Just to keep it all nice and tidy. Bit of foam. This, I'm assuming, is the actual compressor. Still in its bag. Uh, you've got the nice film on there, I'll pull that off. This is a metal case. Um, don't know if it's magnetic. The back's magnetic, so the case itself is going to be aluminium. Um, the back bit that it was sticking to is probably the compressor behind here. You've got USB out, USB C in, I'm assuming, and the 12 volt car charger in. Light on the top, the nozzle adapter on the top. Uh, I can't see anywhere on this one where you can hide the nozzle like you could on the Osram. That was a pretty cool feature, so you can't lose that. But we do get a bag to keep everything in with this one. Another little bit of foam there. I'm assuming all the other attachments are in this box. So in this box, you have your main attachment with a lever attachment. Like I really like these over the screws because when you're screwing like these ones, when you're screwing the nozzle on and off, you lose a fair bit of pressure. At least I think you do anyway. So having the clip-on valve is not a nice feature for me. Um, and that also, when you clip these up, that releases air pressure. 
you clip it down it locks into place and when you clip them up it releases some air pressure you got the 12 volt or cigarette charger port which does plug directly into the bottom of this which is handy to keep in the car you also get a USB-C cable which is great to see USB-C on a device like this the previous one my Osram one that had micro USB and obviously the new standard is USB-C it's quicker you get a stronger connection it lasts longer and obviously all new phones have them so I already have a bunch of them in the car and in my house so that can just go in a spare drawer for when one of them eventually breaks you get two different screw-on attachments like so in the instructions one's for a Schrader valve and one is for the Priester valve and then you've got your ball inflator too so that's pretty cool I'll pop all these back away and we'll have a look at the compressor itself see if it's got any power in it if not then I will plug it into charge and we'll go through some of the settings so I know a lot of you will like this part let's see if we can get this nice That was on there, very tight. Tighter than what you'd normally expect a protective cover on there. So you've got a nice glossy finish on there. I'm gonna use this case to give it a wipe. Um, yeah, nice glossy finish on there. Um, so what was it, one puts the torch on. That's pretty decent, fairly light torch. Um, that's first. I'll flick the lights off soon and test the torch features. So number two, Gives you an SOS feature, so that's a red flashing light. That's pretty good. So you can sit this um, next to your car, like that way, with the hose coming through while you're pumping your tire up. If you're on the side of the road, it gives a bit of warning for oncoming traffic, which is great. The Osram didn't have that, so I'm quite impressed with that. And then you also have a faster flashing one of the red light, so that's really good. All right, so this is as dark as I can set this room. It's pretty much pitch black. You can't see anything. My hands are like right in front of the camera right now. Uh, so I'm gonna turn the torch on. And this is how the torch performs. You can see the little squares from the diffuser. It's not too bad actually. Like I can see quite a lot of stuff around in the room where I'm looking. Um, I'm holding the camera around 40 centimeters away from the booklet and we can kind of see it I can almost read the booklet if I bring it right up then it's pretty clear it's a white light so that's pretty good so let's see how bright the flashing hazards are that's pretty decent like if you were coming down the road you'd definitely be able to see that it's not lighting up the entire room but if it was a dark night you'd definitely be able to see that flashing especially when you put it on the fast setting uh, let's turn this on press and hold digital readout uh, which is pretty good in the light I'm trying to get that in direct light of the of my light shining down so I'm trying to see how well that reads and with the light shining directly on it it's pretty difficult to read but um, I'm going to test this out in some light anyway so it's pretty good battery seems to be fully charged anyway um, it's on car and we're on bar at the moment so and then it's took gone from onto the bike mode we just changed that to PSI as you saw the numbers flashing that's the default setting so scooter bar again so it's 2.4 bar and a ball we've got 8 psi so the flashing set is the memory set and then you can obviously increase that up and down uh, 0.5 psi at a time um, how many bar can we do at a time 0.5 bar at a time on that 
can we change that to a different setting? So yeah, so similar to how the Osram worked, if you hold the mode select button, so if you press it, it changes between the different ones. But so if you hold it, it will change between bar, PSI, KPA, and kilograms per centimeter cubed. I don't know. I don't know what that one is. I've uh, never heard of it. But it's there. Um, it seems to be the same as bar. It's a little bit different from bar. So bar's 2.5. What was that set at? 2.55. Yeah, so it's similar to bar. Um, I work with PSI. That's how I know my tire pressures and stuff. Whatever you work with, you can change it to on here. And if you change the setting, say like, um, we don't want bike, we want car. Let's get it on PSI, 36, it's almost right. I have 37 PSI in my tires because they're heavy load tires. I have a lot of stuff in my car. Um, so let's turn it off and then back on again. We'll see if it saved that to the memory. So let's go around to the car and it saved it to 37. So that's pretty cool. Um, it might lose it over time, I'm not sure, but I'm going to have this turned off for a little bit. I'm going to put it on charge for a little bit to make sure it is fully charged. And then we're going to go and give it a test in the car because I've got a bit of a low tire. So yeah, that's a quick rundown of the settings. If I press the power button, that turns the compressor on and it's a little bit loud. I think it's a little bit louder than the Osram. It sounds pretty powerful. Uh, I, I felt it jerk a little bit when I pressed it, but it wasn't too much. So I'm gonna see, I'm gonna see how it works. I forgot to say that this does have a charger on it, so you can use it as a power bank. It says 6,000 milliamp power bank. So I'm gonna use the cable that came with it. I'm gonna plug my phone in. I'm gonna see does it show up as a fast charge or does it show up as a normal charge? So that's just a normal charge. It will come up just underneath there with fast charge if it was fast charging and also at the bottom here would tell you if it was fast charging. All right guys, so we're gonna try and do a audio test on the air compressor and uh, I've got it turned on, this is set. Uh, Actually on zero, it's hard to see in this light. I can see it pretty clearly, uh, but the glare from the sun on the camera, that's making a big difference. Uh, I've got this two feet away, as you can see, it's about two feet away. I'll try and be quiet uh, and get an, an ambient volume uh, on here. It is a quite a noisy street and there's a lot going on. There's planes flying by and stuff on a sunny day, so uh, hopefully we can get a decent reading. So we're hovering between 35 and 40 decibels on there as an ambient audio. So we're gonna turn this on and we're gonna see what it goes up to. That reads about 70 decibels from two foot away. It does move around on this bag. I put it on this bag because the first time I tested it, this paint scratched off a little bit on the floor or just on this concrete floor like that. This time I'm gonna test it. I'm gonna try and hold it up like that because it does just move around on the bag. So uh, let's stick it on my tire. We'll get some air pumping in and hopefully we can uh, get a timer going as well. Right, to attach these, using the quick release nozzle it's dead simple you push it on the tire and you push the lever down so push it on the tire and you push the lever down there we go um you want to have the nozzle of your tire around this height so it can sit nicely on the floor so that should be okay there i'd prefer it a little bit further down but uh 
can't be bothered getting in the car and moving it to be honest. So let's turn it on. We're on car, apparently. Oh, we're on bar again. Future Phil here. Um, I used this as a power bank while I was working on a job underneath the floor and as you can see it reset itself to bar and changed all the settings back to default because the battery completely drained. Once the battery completely drains everything resets to factory default and you need to go through and set your pressures again. It's not a massive issue just make sure you've got some charge in there and don't run it completely flat. If it does run flat it doesn't take that long to set it up to the right pressure for yourself. It's only a couple of seconds so it's not too bad in the long run. So this has reset itself to bar um, I did have this set to PSI. If you hold the two little circles which changes the mode, that'll change to PSI. So apparently I've got 11 PSI in there. My target is 37.5. So when the battery runs out completely on this, like it had done, it resets everything to factory settings. Seems to anyway. Um, I've used this for a few days now. Uh, uh, let's just throw some air in this and we'll see how long it takes. Let me grab a timer on my phone, see if we can get that on camera as well. Okay, so I've got a timer set up here and I've got the PSI showing up there. Hopefully you can see both. I'm trying to keep this on the little rubber mat to stop it scratching on the floor because the paint does scratch up pretty easy and obviously you've got your case that comes with it and that'll help it. The vents on the sides that's for airflow. There's not really one on the bottom on this one. There is on the Osram, so the airflow comes off the side, so you can lie this down or you can stand it flat. So uh, let's get this going and we'll see how long it takes. go so we're at 37.5 now it shut off itself like it's supposed to do which is really good uh, six and a half minutes to go from 11 to 37.5 that's not too bad to be fair that's like an extreme difficulty this tire has got a slow puncture somewhere which this arriving just in time to keep me topped up I've got a puncture repair kit that I'm gonna give a go and see if we can repair the puncture on this and uh, Obviously, this little air compressor will come in handy. From what it was looking like on the battery, it dropped down to two bars. Now it's turned off, it's back on to three. Um, so I'd say it's probably about 75% battery. It's doing all right so far. I'm, gonna, I'm not gonna charge this, I'm gonna see how much I can get out of it with, uh, with one charge and how long it lasts. So uh, yeah, I'll find myself football and we'll go and pump that up. Um, I'll probably borrow my nephew's bike and see if we can pump his tires as well. So, uh, yeah, so far, quite happy. Alright guys, so I'm in my backyard. I've got a brand new basketball here, fully deflated. Um, and I've just taken the needle that comes with the kit, comes in this little bag with the other two valves. Going to see how long it takes to get this basketball pumped up. I've not charged this since I pumped up the car tire. So, we're going to get this set. I'm going to show you how to set this to specifications it says on this pump and we're going to get it done. So it says inflated 6 to 8 pounds. Uh, so that's going to be your PSI again. So we'll press the mode switch button. Uh, we'll go down to the bike. It doesn't matter what mode it's on. But um, obviously you can set each mode as long as it's charging there. Like I say, the battery runs out completely it resets these charges so just be aware of that so that's already set to eight so when you go into the mode just press up or down once it doesn't change it it just tells you what it's set at. so that's set to eight psi and it says to inflate between six and eight so that's what we're going to do so we just i'm going to put the needle in first 
because it's just easier that way. Um, if this was already inflated a bit and I could stand it up, then it would, I could just do it the, uh, and just put it straight onto here. You flick the handle up, so like you're putting it on a car tire, you push that in there and you flick it back down again. And there, it's fully attached, that's not coming off. Um, that's there. I'll get a timer on my phone again. I'm probably gonna put this this way. Just to try and make it so that the ball's not gonna roll away and this isn't gonna go weird uh, while I'm pumping it up. So we gotta see how long it takes. So three, two, one. Don't know what's going on with this. It's measuring zero on the pounds per square meter, yep. pounds per square inch. Uh, let's see if we can change it to something else. Still zero on there. Right, let's see if it's on a different setting. So we're measuring zero again. Could be that this nozzle is attaching and that's saying zero. So I'm gonna try and take the whole thing out and then pop it back in. Cause this is, it's not fully inflated, but there's definitely pressure in there. Let's see if this is seated in here properly. I should have paused. <laughs> when I'm editing, uh, I'll go back in, I'll see where it stops at and I'll calculate the difference. So we're still registering zero on the ball. Still saying zero. So I'm not sure what's happening with that. Obviously it's working. Right, okay. That's interesting. So obviously when it's below a certain pressure, this won't register at all. So I think when it's below two PSI, it kicked in at three by the looks of it. Um, I'm gonna have to go back and edit and see how long it actually took. No, Editor Phil did not like that idea, so I just deflated the ball completely and started again, which requires no maths. So there we go, less than a minute, 51 seconds and perfectly inflated basketball to 8 PSI. Um, yeah, so it works really well, works perfectly. Um, as I guessed before, it doesn't actually kick in until 3 PSI uh, on the register. So if it's not kicking in and it's showing zero while it's pumping up, it's just because the pressure's still too low. Once it gets to around 3 PSI, it'll kick in and start showing you the pressure. So all good with that one. All right guys, so we've got my nephew's bike here. Uh, his tire is completely flat. Hopefully he doesn't have a puncture. I don't know how long it's been sat for. Um, it says on the tire 40 to 65 PSI. So let's see what the preset for the bike is. Uh, 45. So we'll set this to... We'll just go 55, right in the middle. Uh, Again, with the car tire, push it on, push the tab down, and then hit go. So we're gonna see how long it takes to inflate this tire from completely flat, as you can see. I can just press that down dead easy. Uh, reset the timer, try and get this in shot for you. Time is reset. Three, two, one. Oh, 
So just under, just under a minute and a half to fully inflate a bicycle tyre. There we go. Nice and easy. Right, so we're going to get my nephew Logan to put this one, uh, pump this tyre up. It's not as bad, it's still pretty low. Um, so I'm going to talk him through how to do it and he's going to show you how easy it is. You put that on the tyre, on the nozzle, and then you push that down. So, put it on, push it down. Yeah? Come on. Strong. That's it. And then you just press the big middle button. Yep. Well, that's fully done. So lifting it off, lift it up, pull up, pull up. All nice and easy. Logan's ran off because uh, he got bored. He's ADHD, so anything less than 30 seconds, he's off to doing something else. So that's fully done, both tyres in a couple of minutes, and you're good to go. All right, guys, so the Synczini Mini Air Compressor. I quite like it. Um, it does what it says it'll do, and you know, it, it works pretty well. I couldn't really find any faults with it. The only problem I had was the paint coming off the back from it rolling around on the floor and vibrating along. Um, it runs pretty well. The battery is only just below half, I think, from doing the car tire, the, the basketball, and at both the bike tires, so it's doing all right. The fact that you can just plug this in in your car or charge it by any USB-C is really good. The power bank on it isn't that great. Um, I charged my phone with this a couple of times and I only got about 25% on my phone. And obviously it's not a super fast charger. It just charges kind of slow on a trickle charge. So it does all right. It's good in an emergency. That's basically what this is advertised for. This is advertised for use in an emergency. So like you've got a flat tire at the side of the road or you come out to your car in the morning and you notice your tire's a little bit down and you need to pump it up or you're about to get your bike out of the shed and you're about to go on a bike ride with your friends and you need to pump your tires up. This is amazing for bike tires and footballs and small things. For car tires, it's okay. It works pretty well, but you're gonna have to wait a little bit longer because the airflow on this isn't the fastest but for the size of it and how compact and portable it is it's perfect for taking on bicycles and uh, motorbikes I'm assuming it's pretty good for because the tires aren't they're kind of an in-between of a bike tire and a full car tire so it should be pretty good for those overall though I'm pretty happy with this um, I'm sticking links down below to where you can purchase this uh, it's a link that's been provided to me by Singzini it's at their Amazon link so um, if you do want to pick one of these up, click on that link below. It helps me out, helps those guys out, and it definitely helps you out because you can pick one of these up pretty cheap. At the minute, they've got a 15% off deal and it's £31.43 on uh, their Amazon page. This is the link that they're going to give me. That's what I'm putting down below. So if you want to pick one of these up, click on that link. Go grab yourself one. Uh, let me know how it does for you if you use this a lot. If you like this kind of video, if you like this air compressor, then hit that like button. If you want to follow along for more video reviews and things like that, I am getting back into the swing of things, so there'll be more videos coming out soon. Hit that subscribe button, follow along, and I greatly, greatly appreciate it. We're almost at 3,000 subscribers. You're all amazing. I will catch you in the next video.